uh, hi everyone and here we are so we are going to talk about apollo graphql so graphql is a open specification like uh, rest api common standards right so apollo is a vendor apollo you can call it a third party who is implementing the integration of graphql with the different different languages right so apollo is providing the library so that we can work with the graphql with the node.js by using apollo client and apollo server libraries okay so we can use a simple express graphql also which is like also a open source solution or we can use apollo so there are many vendors available which are doing this like if you heard about prisma and then there is apollo and there is a gql lot of libraries are available which provides the common standards to work with a graphql okay so what we are going to do now uh, we'll take a look onto the documentation i mean uh, that is the, the right thing to do developers let's say documents okay so in the previous discussion we talked about is there are two things we need is the schema and the resolvers right so we'll talk about apollo server apollo client is a different thing which we are going to talk about apollo client is like when you have apollo server up and running then you obviously you can't do the http rest api calls to the apollo graphql server you will be using apollo graphql client and you will be making a call to the apollo graphql server okay so this is just a simple diagram like this is the client and this is a server your client can be web mobile or android or anything that is using the client library okay you can write a client in some other language server in another language because these are like common spec standards you can do whatever you want here we are going to use node.js for writing a graphql apollo server so it's like the same thing you write the rest apis in java node.js ruby or something and write front end in either android or web app or something else right so these are just a specifications which we just need to follow we will just, just write a graphql server and then any client web client mobile client using the graphql client libraries would be able to access the data using queries and mutations okay so get started with apollo server if you look at the documentation then you will see a lot of different different things there are apollo version 1 and apollo version 2 we'll talk about the latest one okay so first of all what you need to do is if you just go ahead with this uh, node.js setup and all then just create a simple package node.json and install these apollo server and graphql okay because this apollo server library will give you this apollo server and graphql okay so first of all as we discussed we need two things right we need a schema we need a resolver so if you see what we are doing is we are creating so this code snippet is important to understand things we are creating a server apollo server and we are passing the type definition you can call it as a schema also and the resolvers that's two things we need as an input and then you can just server dot relation and it will start your apollo server for you this is your apollo server you will send a request okay and then this will be your graphql console from the server side i mean this is like a postman for the graphql where you will write a query in the left hand side and you will see the response in the right hand side so it's like a graphql playground you are getting right and you will be sending the queries something like this we'll write it uh, with the express server and we will see how this is working you can actually access in the sandbox now i will just talk about the basic terminologies which we have already understood the schema types mutations queries okay schema definitions so when i say schema means we are actually creating types using these scalars right type book type user type course so type book has the two properties title and author both are optional properties then title author author has a name and books is returning a book type which we already have so it's like custom type you have right so this is this is like schema types you are defining after this what you need is what you need is the query and mutation so what all different types we have a scalar types which is like string boolean number object types these you can call as an object type like book and author then query type and mutations input types and enum types these are basically all the types we have in graphql so 
scalar types are like the primitives object type we have seen this books authors and all and query type and mutation uh, so let's go step by step scalar types we can see string boolean id number float integer object type these are called uh, object type and the query type when you use this capital q query or ca capital m mutation these are another different types so this is the query type and there are another mutations we will also have uh, let's go down these are the type mutations so these are different type of mutations we also have a union all these things i think in custom input types we have already seen this thing in the slides also now just understand the types only for now don't understand anything else this is another type we have this is the type query right here we are doing uh, get avatar okay that's it right now once we have all these types defined it combinedly become a schema and that schema is a type definition which we are passing to our graphql server right so here the next thing is oh sorry we don't need that not studio we'll talk about basic example these are just a simple types so in the type definition there will be most probably will be query mutations and your custom object type like event location weather info so this you can call it as a simple schema definition it is not having the mutations maybe you want to build a graphql server where you just doing a query not updating or creating any resource right uh, you can also design a mutation mutations are like methods okay like type mutation and type query what is the major difference these are like same methods but query is used only to fetch the data it will like you are doing a query so from client side you will do a query upcoming events that will give you the array of events here this is a mutation update user detail so this is the mutation you will trigger that will take id and email and will return the user type email is of required type id is of required type for this mutation okay now if we talk about simple creating server uh, i think we should be getting that if i go there getting started we will talk about these union types interface and all custom scalars are also you can define okay fetching data so if you just talk about simple graphql server right what you need is this okay so graphql with uh, express we will see so here it is we are taking type definitions and resolvers right so resolvers are something which holds the actual implementation of your queries and mutations i will just go directly there uh, here we have the resolvers so from the previous discussions you know already understood that we have the queries we have the types we have the mutations custom types enums and all right so this is what resolvers are resolvers will define the actual implementation of your query and mutations like query number 6 will return 6 number 7 will return 7 right so whatever we have defined in the query and mutation so this is the type definition and if we define the resolvers for this type definition then this will be like this right a query is the user user is taking id as an input and returning a user object right so the resolvers resolvers will will have the same set of queries and same set of mutations which you have defined in the schema so here is a user it is these are the arguments which will accept, accept and it is returning returning the array of user ids okay uh, I, I will stop here so here we covered only the basic of schemas union and interface union types is something is like you can create by creating the union of two different types and we, we will see these things like the custom directives union types and interfaces when we write the actual code okay but if you just take a look on to the example what all we are creating we are creating the types so these all are types entity types you can create a interface type where one type is implementing the another type scalar types are like you can actually create a custom type also 
and rest you will be defining the query you will be defining the mutations and this become your schema so schema is nothing but the combinations of all your types your query and your mutation this is your schema rest all you will be writing the resolvers resolvers will take care of the, the implementations of the query and mutation okay so what i will do is uh, let's write go into the code and try to understand it i will just show you the index.js code nothing more nothing less because this is what we are doing okay so this is nothing but a same example that how we are going to create a graphql server using express okay so what we are doing here we already discussed that we need a schema and we need a resolvers right so we are getting a type definition which is a schema and this is the resolver we are passing that into the apollo server and then this server we are applying this middleware of express app to this and then we are starting the express app this is what uh, the latest uh, apollo server this is how it works i mean in the apollo implementation 1.x we were doing things little differently okay we were actually getting the definitions and resolvers and then we were actually building the schema by calling the execute method and then we were not do we were explicitly adding the the graph iql middleware to the to this apollo server instance but now it is more simplified this is what you need to write to get started with the basic graphql server so here you are passing type definition resolvers and you are passing that in the apollo server now if you see the type definition type definition is nothing but the definition of different types we have type query type mutation and your custom object type it can be anything like if i just define type user is another type and in the type user i have like two arguments one is the id of type id which is of required okay and then i have email which is of type string and required i can have like password which is of type string and required right so these are this is just a type i can have address which is pointing to another type which is like array of address okay and here i will define this type which will have like uh, house number which is of type string and required we can have more fields like city state country right so this is the new type which i have defined now it depends on you like you wanted to expose that type through the query or mutation query means you can you will say okay uh, i have this query users and what it is going to do is it is going to return a list of users okay so user it's not null not empty array with not null values this is users so whatever you are defining inside a query so query means these these are the apis i'm exposing these are the methods i'm exposing and mutation means this is the particular method i'm exposing to the client okay you can you can do create cat by passing the name you can you can fetch the list of user list of cats and just a simple hello which will give you the message okay these same queries or same mutation you have to implement it in resolvers okay this is a type def in the users i have the id email password and all these things let's keep it simple okay now what i need to do is i will go to the resolvers resolvers are the secondary thing where actually we will do the implementation so this is my resolvers and here i you see only query and mutation there is another thing you can define is subscription so in the query i have three things hello cats and the next thing i will add is users right and we are not passing any argument we are just returning the data okay so cats is actually returning the array of cats similarly i will return the array of users in the array of users i need uh, i think email and there is an address which is again an array of object there we have the house number property only 
I think that is a string test. Right, so I did as I created some types and I exposed those types into the queries and maybe also mutation like create user or something. But from the query, I exposed it as a users. So same name as a method I will be defining inside a query object of this resolver. Here I have added this hello cats and now this is a user has been added, right? If you add a one more query, then you have to add it in the query object. If you are adding something in the mutation, then you have to add it here. So this is clear. We are defining a schema of with the types, queries and mutations. Resolvers holds the actual implementation of those queries and mutation. And you have to use the same name, whatever you have defined in the type definitions. Like here, hello cats user, same name will be defined in the resolvers. And they will return you some set of data. Users will return you the array of users and it's a not null, not empty data, right? So same set of data we are returning. Okay, so this is the minimal setup of how we write a basic GraphQL server using Apollo. Here we are using Apollo Server Express, right? We are getting Apollo Server and in the Apollo Server we are passing type def and resolvers, created the server, passing the Express instance as a middleware and then we are starting the Express app. So once we start this, it will expose this this GraphQL uh, schema and all these resolvers, queries and mutations to the port 4000 and using the post, HTTP post, port slash GraphQL is the endpoint, we will send these queries and mutations, okay? That we will see in the next video, like how to start this and how to just use this GraphQL playground.